singles or doubles, somebody's hitting a weaker second serve or maybe even a shorter first serve and you're winding up, you're inside the court, you want to nail a winner and then kapoom, that thing goes right in the fence because you're overhitting it. So in this video we're going to tackle the dink serves because yeah, we shouldn't miss those. And yet again, we do all the time because we're greedy. So first thing that we have to consider is what mindset do we have when we attack those balls? When do you get those dink serves? I see them mostly at 3-0, 3-5, maybe at 4-0. And ugh, at 3-0, 3-5, and still 4-0, people are not winning matches by hitting winners. Actually, world class doesn't win matches by hitting winners. Force errors. That is your first change in your mindset. You want to force errors. Make the other person run. Build the point with that first shot. You don't have to finish it right away. Don't be so greedy. So get rid of the idea that you have to finish the point right there and instead ask yourself, which part of the court can I hit that hurts them the most? What is the most likely shot that I can hit that will force an error or get them into a really terrible situation? The second thing that you want to recognize is your own court position. By virtue of them hitting a dink serve, they pull you in. But many players, when they attack that ball, swing the exact same way as if they were behind the baseline. And that is when they hit them out. Because you're further inside the court, you also have less room to hit into. So you got to manipulate the ball a little differently. And there's three ways to do it. Hit with more topspin. The rotation will get the ball over the net quickly and keep it in the court. You can slice it or you simply hit it a little softer, which seems to be the biggest issue when people think they want to be aggressive. So first option, more topspin. So same preparation, of course, as you would prepare for a ground stroke, but you do want to brush steeper. You want to get more rotation on the ball for the ball to clear the net and then quickly come down. Just heavy, heavy topspin, brush up on it. And that's good enough, right? Again, make them move right away. Don't give them a free point. Next option is the slice. You can hit it on the backhand and on the forehand, of course. Nothing wrong with the forehand slice. The good news with that is you're already in your volley grip. If you come in close enough, you can use that as a chip and charge, an attack. All right, so you're just coming in right after the return. I know that looks old school, but it feels really good. And of course, everybody's least favorite option, just simply hit it a little softer, right? Forget about having to hit a winner with Mach 15. Because you're so far inside the court, you're taking time away from them. So just hit it a little softer, It's perfectly fine. Go for good placement and you start the point off. That's good enough. See how close I am inside the court? I'm giving it two, three aggressive steps and I'm in a great volley position. So again, you don't have to hit a winner. Don't be greedy. When you recognize that somebody's hitting the serve shorter, I'm hoping you have already figured out what their weaker side is. So that should be your target or the side of the court where they have to move more to get to. Because up until a very, very high level, whoever moves more commits more errors. And as I said before, be okay with just forcing an error. You don't have to hit a clean winner because most of the time, when we're greedy, we overhit. So let's assume I'm playing a right-hander. They serve from the deuce court. Attack this space attack the backhand side and stay away from the lines. Again, you don't have to hit a winner. Easy, Tiger. If you're turning on the at side, you get a dink serve and you have figured out that your opponent's backhand is the weaker side. Of course, you're going to attack the at side. Where you make your opponent run the most, though, would be the deuce court. So you can absolutely, from this position here, attack the deuce court. However, that leads me to the next point, to recover properly, because we're forgetting that sometimes as well. Next step, after you 
actually attack the dink serve. You hit one of the three options, either more topspin slice or just a little softer, that's fine. You attack the ball, you feel great about it, you rest on your laurels and don't recover. So let's go over the options that you have, where to place the ball and how to recover properly. So Andy's gonna give me a dink serve, I'll attack his backhand and then I recover properly. Number one, did I make it? Yes. Excellent. So what I don't want to do is exactly that. I don't want to watch my ball and get stuck in no woman's land. I'm hitting the ball and then I recover, which is about here. The next one is if I'm attacking his forehand, that is where he has to run more. However, if I'm not recovering, I'll leave my forehand side wide open. So here's how I do want to recover. So if I'm just standing here, if you were to get there, my side is wide open. So if I want to come in, attack it, I'm following it up right here. I do not want to go all the way to the middle. If I decide to stay back at the baseline, I do have to recover to my bisector of an angle, which is to the right of the hash mark, actually. Same is true, of course, on the deuce court. If I go cross court, that's my higher percentage shot. He doesn't have to move quite as much, but I have fewer steps to recover to the proper bisector of an angle. I'm coming over here, three strides, and I'm in a good defensive position and or I can jump immediately back on offense should he get to the ball. That actually is really good margin. However, do not admire your shot, recover. If I'm coming in, I follow it in one, two, three steps. Hopefully he's gonna get a weak reply back or if I choose to stay back at the baseline from right here, I have to move towards the left of the hash mark. And I start the ball out very aggressively. He has to run right away. So again, you don't have to hit a winner. 